Hi everybody, I'm Peter Travers. Welcome to Popcorn, where we tell you things that are popping in the culture. And my guest today, Wesley Snipes, who I'm thrilled to have here, is kind of new Jack Wesley now, because instead of just <laughs> acting, dancing, actioning, mm. he is now an author. Now an we're writing. An author of talent An of author. I've What's transcended this? to being an author. Uh, has the voice. Mm. Yes, everything has changed. My English teachers will be very, very proud. <laughs> You're so grand now <laughs> when you're doing that. It, it does that when you become an author. author. It changes you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> really does. Your well, voice, that lasts your for voice long. and everything changes. Your <laughs> voice just, and temperament. It just, it just goes. You become, uh, you become infatuated with the words. <laughs> Great. Yes. So that's why you wrote this book with your friend Ray Norman. That's correct. You put out Town of God. Why? What, what? Why would you say after a career that you've had, I'm going to do something else? What are the limits of my and the boundaries of my creativity? How can I express the God within me in other ways through my creativity? Mm -hmm. And what kind of a challenge would it be to try to do something like writing a book? Uh, do I have the discipline? Did do you? I have the words? Ah, uh, well, how thank long the Lord. did it take? We're here. We're here. I know you're we're here, here so but I don't know when you something. started this. Two. Well, it took two and a half years. We actually took to write the book, 700 pages long in its first uh, origin original state, and then we uh, got a great editor, great publishing partners, and we were able to edit it down to what you now see is the first of what we hope are uh, a series of three. A trilogy. A trilogy. As yes. authors say. Because the world and talent of a god, the battle between the fallen angels and the heavenly hosts and the warriors of heaven, uh, good and evil, is a universe that lends itself to a lot of interpretation a lot of creativity. It is a battle between the spirit warrior, mm. who is Talon, mm. and this female doctor, who's got no mm. faith at all. Mm. You know. mm. So she's, she's skeptical. She's, she's, oh, she's skeptical, she's skeptical, but not a cynic. And like all of us, mm -hmm. I think we've all had periods of time where we've questioned our faith. We've questioned the relationship with God and the power of God and that influence it has uh, over us in our day-to-day -day lives and also what our purpose in life is. Mm -hmm. So these are things that are somewhat universal that we're being expressed through our beautiful Lauren uh, in this piece, mm, but I think resonate with everyone. It does, but you have chosen a woman as your protagonist. This is a smart move. <laughs> now, it's not like you haven't played a woman, uh, you certainly have done that. I've done that. Yeah. I've done, and I understood <laughs> how they was being left out, see? <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, if this becomes a movie, really want to play Lauren, do you? <laughs> great character. You've done, you've, Very great you've character. You've done the heels and the makeup Non-traditional and the Non-traditional casting is always <laughs> necessary. You know? It would be pretty cool if you played both <laughs> talent. I think talent, I think Lauren should be beautiful. I don't you, think I'd make a very good really? looking woman. But I thought actually, in, I know I don't make a very good no, in, in I was Wong born Fu, to be a male. You were a lot hotter than Patrick Swayze. I had a great body, but the rest of me was a little truck ridden. I mean, it was a little, <laughs> it was a little, you know, we didn't have, you know, the Housewives of Atlanta and all that whole makeup thing going on at that time. So, yeah. It's so it's not going to happen. If I snuck up on you in the middle of the night, you might, <laughs> you, <laughs> you might have been a little scared. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that. But talk about the these two elements there because I call the elements fantasy in one part and faith which is key there's mm. quotations from scriptures all mm. over this book mm. where where are those two things coming from is the fantasy there's a little bit of blade in what we you see think in so? the, I think so <laughs> yes I'm assuming you think bit. so too it's there uh, I think because I'm a spiritual mm -hmm. person uh, the characters that I create tend to have a little spiritual resonance mm -hmm. with them. So it, it's kind of natural that there would be some similarities to another uh, hunter, mm -hmm. another warrior of justice or warrior of what he believes is right. I can see where there would be some similar. And of course the swords are easy. But it would be fun for the fans of Blade to find all of the subtle references in Talent of God. There are a lot of little things in there, like nice trivia 
tidbits. Your own spirituality, was mm. this since childhood? Yeah, you know, I guess so. You're from the Bronx, right? From the Bronx. Yeah. From the Bronx and uh, grew up in the Bronx, grew up in, in Harlem, was baptized at Canaan Baptist Church mm -hmm. in Harlem. Reverend Wyatt T. Walker put his hands on my head and said, well, maybe one day this boy might be a preacher. Didn't really work out that way. <laughs> well, in a way, but I'm you're kind of close now. <laughs> but I mean, you're in the Bronx. It's just a tough neighborhood that you tough neighborhood. But the people were always very spiritual. You know, it was uh, the families there had a strong spiritual and faith-based tradition. Mm -hmm. So even though it was crazy, and sometimes the Bronx was burning, as you yeah. might recall, the people never lost faith, and you know they never turned. Most didn't turn to the dark side. At least not in my family. Yeah. yeah. So they encouraged spirituality. They encouraged, you know, you had to go to church every, every Sunday. And sometimes two or three times a week you had to go. I'm know? hearing in your voice that you did have to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You were there. I, well, I mean, there was, there was, sometimes it, you didn't have to bend my arm to get there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of people that I definitely wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> Who was getting you to, to do the right thing? Oh, man, some of the most beautiful young ladies in the world in really? church. Man, I'm, Lord, I'm, wow, the fire going to hit me now, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you the truth, some of the most beautiful, beautiful people you can find in the church. And yes. I think you just made converts all over the, the place with this one now. <laughs> that's, a, that's where you go. Hopefully they'll enjoy yeah. the book. Yeah. They'll well, enjoy the book and uh, take the ride and maybe feed on some of the spiritual food that we've laced in this. Well, uh, when you're novel. saying that, and I'm hearing you say that, and I'm hearing you say that you take this comfort in it as well, mm. but as a black man growing up in America, what, what about <clears throat> in terms of racism in the world? How did you encounter Never that? Never happened to me. Never happened. Never happened ever. <laughs> Never <laughs> you ever. You just went. Never ever. You went from Florida to Choc the Bronx. Chocolate boys were always in. They were always They're in They're always the, the craze. Bronx. That's the way it can all goes away <laughs> <laughs> as long you know, as you stay. You know, if you couldn't get attention, you know, because you were, you know, fine and you were like that beautiful one, yeah. you had to have a ability to use words or you had to be able to dance or make them laugh. And I could do both, all three, actually. But that's the thing. I think people, when they, they look at you, Wesley Snipes, and they see the Blade trilogy, they mm. see Demolition Man, they see the action movies. Me, as a critic, I can see New Jack City or Water Dance. Or, or Disappearing Acts. Dis or yeah, or Sugar things Hill. With, but uh, this, sing, this song and dance, man, is new to me. When <laughs> it's crazy that I'm doing I mean, You know, that was the goal to be a song and dance man doing repertory theater around the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I ended up going to State University of New York at Purchase, Purchase College mm -hmm. now, yeah, I know it. They, at that time they didn't have a uh, musical theater program. If you were into musical theater, you had to do it on your own. It focused primarily on the classic European uh, theaters um, training. Mm -hmm. So we kind of pushed that aside. And then when I came out of school, we went right into doing Broadway again, but dramatic roles on Broadway. What were you doing on Broadway? What were oh, these? man. Actually, the first time I put on a dress was in a piece called uh, Execution of Justice, uh, directed by Emily Mann. And it was about the Harvey Milk experience in San Francisco. And I played Sister Boom Boom. All right, so you were always leading in that direction I so that so. you could play Lauren in Talent of Black. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know is, why. This is it. It just happens. <laughs> it's a revelation. <laughs> it, <laughs> I've it, been revealed. It, <laughs> man, it could have been, it, the career could have gone a completely different way. What? And you and RuPaul could have been fighting <laughs> for right. who was in control. <laughs> Imagine that. Of whatever kind of show that is. But it's funny, the first time I remember seeing you, you were in the video with Michael Jackson for Bad, mm. directed by Martin Scorsese. Mm, produced Gang by leader. Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. Everybody <sighs> was there. Man. Mm. What was that like? Oof. That was mind blowing, actually. You know, to get cast, because of course all of us thespians mm -hmm. desire to work with the greatest directors and <laughs> of cinema and theater. I'm sure you and went into Scorsese and said, yes. You know, the theater. I'm going to tell you what I did. Let me theater. tell you what I did. Yeah. I knew that Scorsese and De Niro had a relationship, right? De Niro had done a number of films with Scorsese. Mm -hmm. 
I could sense that Scorsese liked a particular tone and style of acting. Mm -hmm. So I chose to do my audition in that style and tone. And that's, I think, how I got the, uh, got the role. I was doing my little version of his, his Robert De Niro world. So you were doing Mean Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it worked. And it really worked. It well, worked. what was the experience with Michael? Unbelievable. Really? Unbelievable. Put the stamp of, like, this is definitely what I need to do. This is the keep moving forward, keep going. And to be around a master of the art form like that, to have the opportunity to sit and learn and watch his process was amazing. Life-changing, artistically life You could have a relationship with somebody you didn't know before like that, like Michael Jackson, and it was all good? No uh, nerves on your part or his? Uh, <laughs> I would. <laughs> well, it kind of went the other way. Hey. We, we filmed the, a couple of scenes of Bad in Harlem, mm -hmm. and uh, Michael hadn't been to Harlem in a long time. <laughs> I bet not. So a whole lot of people were kind of upset about that, you know? <laughs> so you had two different groups uh, on the block watching the filming. You had mm -hmm. those who were avid, raving, crazed Michael Jackson's fans, and those who were like, Michael Jackson, you ain't Michael Jackson, you ain't come back to the hood. Michael Jackson, get out of here, you know? And he got a little nervous about that. So here we are walking down the street, doing the scene where he and I are walking along what later on would become the same block we did the Carter on. We used it for the Carter oh, in New Jack City. And he asked me, he says, are you scared? I was like, whoa, wait, whoa, wait a minute. Mike, you asking me? Am I scared? I was like, no, nah, am, am I scared? No, Mike. I was like, are you? He's like, yeah, a little. <laughs> so I went from being his co-star to his bodyguard. <laughs> a couple of steps. Good. <laughs> it's just another little role that you can add to your vast career yeah. choice. I was a bodyguard for Michael Jackson. <laughs> he did it. That's how it all began. <laughs> Somehow Scorsese got involved in this whole video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quincy, Quincy and everything Jones, got he got involved. a cue. And a, yeah, yeah, those guys. <laughs> what, a, what a blessing, you know. Once Hollywood hits, look oh, what man. happens to you. This is a big deal. I mean, you're in Wildcats with Goldie Hawn, right? You have this movie career. And then with New Jack City, mm. there's a huge thing happening. You're working mm. with Spike Lee in two movies mm. Mm. that... Some people don't remember or know about and should. Mm, Jungle you know. Fever. Jungle Fever yeah, especially, yeah. and yeah. Mo' Better Blues. And Mo' Better You and Blues. Denzel, yeah. Shadow and Bleak. We had a good time Oh, doing yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, I got the chance to work with Branford Marcellus on that yeah. as well, mm -hmm. you know. But that, was, that fell right into what I was already trained to do, is to create the characters in the three and four dimensional way. So we would actually, for Mo' Better Blues, when once we got our horns, we would go down to the Copacabana and sit in the back and act like we were musicians to get the feeling of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm sure the musicians loved that. Oh, no, yeah. they didn't. <laughs> they, they, were, they were not like happy musicians. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Right. All off key and yeah. you like, beep, burp, 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 and looking at each other like, yeah, man, you, you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun, so much, so much fun. Blessing to be in, uh, included in, those, in that company. But you know. Success brings this fame, this enormous fame. Funny enough, like I said, I thought that I was going to be doing musical theater and dancing and repertory theater around the country. So doing movies was cool, but it still wasn't fulfilling wasn't what this. I really wanted to do. Even to this day, I like movies. Yeah. If I have a chance, if a choice between doing a movie and doing a dance show, I'll do the dance the show, show first. Yeah. How much opportunity like I are you out, getting? I actually hang out with more dancers than I do actors. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. So your friends are from that world? All, mostly all of them. Yeah, martial artists and dancers. I have more martial arts friends and dancer friends than I do acting friends. That's kind of amazing. I mean, because martial arts starts really early with you too, doesn't mm -hmm. it? How yeah. old are you when you get into this? Uh, 11, 12 years old, training at the Harlem Y in New York City. Uh huh. On the Grandmaster Moses Powell, rest in peace. And I was doing African dance with the great grandmaster, master drummer, master dancer, master choreographer, uh, Larock Bay, mm -hmm. who was a pre uh, precursor to Alvin Ailey. Alvin Ailey was a student of Larock Bay. You're a black belt, right? You karate, um, you, yeah. so many levels of what I'm this is? I'm ranked in maybe six, 
six, six different disciplines at different levels from nine all the way down to three. See, so, so you seem a very serene, focused person, but if I pissed you off in like a bad way, you could just take me and an army down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to know that. Are you happy, Wesley? No, Would you no, like no, some more no, popcorn? No, this is yeah. good. This is <laughs> yeah, good, no, man. You I got butter wanted... on it? You <laughs> no, got butter on the popcorn, man? You can't have that. It melts and You burns. got butter on the popcorn? There is no popcorn uh, with butter right. here. <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, there's a power to, to that. And there's also a power that comes from being a movie star. Sure. And it hasn't... It sounds like you didn't go off the deep end living the good life. You didn't buy no. planes and cars. No. And well, you know, we've done, we've done, we played, we've had plenty of toys. That doesn't make you happy, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. And, I'd uh, love to try it. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you can have the toys and things like that. And at the end of the day, you know, you start to say, okay, well, how am I enriched by this mm -hmm. internally? Unfortunately, that's the way I was bred, you know, to think about the, to think about the spiritual side and the internal uh, aspects of who I am, mm -hmm. who Wesley Snipes is, not just from the physical, but from the internal as well and the spiritual. So, you know, you kind of, uh, yeah, I, I've always been that way. Is it there for you? Is it there for you in the tough times? Absolutely. Because I'm Absolutely. trying to you've think, gotten, what, I mean, what was the, as down many. as you've ever been? As down as I've ever you been. You don't seem down. <clears throat> as down as I've ever been. Well, I mean, you were you in jail know, for a while. A, but well, here's, that's here's down. The that is down. It's, it's relative. You know, jail is a relative term. Like, would you rather know you're in prison and be clear about that? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather be in a prison and not know you're in a prison? Emotional prison. Emotional, mental, yeah. chemical, yeah. all of the above. Most people on what they call the outside are imprisoned, but don't know that they're in prison. Mm -hmm. People on the inside know that they're in prison, right? So there's no illusion there. And then they model their lives based on the value of time that they've learned, the value of consequences for your actions, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Most people on the outside don't do that. You know, they waste time. They figure they can move through life without consequences. But if people didn't know who you were and they said, Wesley, I really like you. You know, you seem to have a, a good center, a good spirit. Mm. What, should, what are the two or three things of yours I should watch that would really tell me who you are? Mm. Not because they made the most money at the box office. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Blade, mm -hmm. Tu Wong Fu, and, uh, oh, the water dance. Water dance. The water dance. The water dance where I play a, play a paraplegic, mm -hmm. uh, an older guy mm -hmm. from my age at the time, and uh, I would say that, and maybe one night stand. One night stand, yeah. One night stand. You won awards for that in yeah. Venice, I think, right? That that's was correct. Some, that's a that's good correct. thing. Yeah. yeah, that shows the breadth of my work. Well, I know. see the future having things for you where you've got so much much more to even show us. Mm. I see an Oscar in your future. I really do. Good, thanks. And Good, I thanks. want to see that happen. I already told him, said, but when I win the Oscar, I'm going to put an afro on it. <laughs> I want to see that too. I'm going to pull out my little but afro and I'm going to stick my afro win on the top of it. Why not win it for a musical? Why not? That'd be great. You know, I think it's oh, great. Oh man, that's so, great. This is how the show ends. You haven't been on the show. Ben Vereen, I love you, song. brother. I love it you. It ends in song, Wesley. Oh. But what was the first thing you did when you were studying musical theater? What did you, what were you in? Pippin. Pippin? Pippin and Godspell. It could be, well, there's, there's got to be two segments Pippin. of something from Pippin. You can I don't remember Magic that. to do, you do remember it. I see it. Oh, I, there's magic to do just for you. We got miracle things to play. See, you made my life worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Wesley, when people <laughs> are not watching the three movies you mentioned to see you, they will be reading Talent Blessing. of God. Wonderful. They will be. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank great, you so much. Great. Blessings.